Hi and welcome to another episode of Reaper TV. In today's video we're going to be taking a look at one of the new features that's been added in 5.11 of Reaper and that's the ability to save parts of your project out as sub-projects. We're going to take a look at how we can do that, we're going to take a look at what effect it has on the audio we're working with and we'll take a look at some of the benefits of working in this way. So let's take a look at how we can do all that now. So I've got a project open in front of me and what we're going to do is we're going to take in this instance the guitar section and we're going to save that out using sub project. Now if you ever use an application like Adobe Photoshop then you're going to be used to things like smart objects which allow you to create sub sections of a piece of artwork that you can then edit independently of its its master should we say its parent and then when you update or save that out, then the parent is updated alongside it. So it allows you to sort of create a semi-non-destructive way of working. So let's take a look at how that works in the context of Reaper. So what I've got is I've got my guitar section or sectioned up and routed through a guitar master track. So I know all my guitars are all going to go through this particular grouping. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click over the parent. And I'm going to come down and we're going to take a look at move track to, to new sub project. Once we do that, that's going to create a new project, transfer all the contents of this particular uh, group over to that new project, at which point that will then update, render, and put an instance of that rendered project into the current project we're working on. That might sound a bit com uh, kind of complicated, but You'll see what I mean when we actually do this now. So if I choose move tracks to a new sub project and we'll let it go through and do what it needs to do. So like I say, first thing it's going to do is open up a new sub project, including all the elements inside this master and parent section. It's going to go through, render it in faster than real time. And once that's done, it'll switch back over to the main project with a pre-rendered version of these guitar tracks inserted back in there. So you'll see now what that's done is we're back in the master project. It's taken out our guitar section and it's replaced it with the rendered version of this particular track. Now, one of the benefits you're going to get with this is it works in a very similar fashion to using freeze or you know, if you render the track out. So all of the effects and everything are taken offline because you're just ending up with a rendered effect, sort of included um, piece of audio. But like I said, the benefit of this now is that we've got this separate project that still contains the guitar parts. So if I just run this, you'll see that we'll just hear the guitars. So let me just hit play on there. So there you go. You can see the guitars are exactly as they should be. And if we switch back over to the main project and we just hit play on there, we'll see we've got everything together, including our pre-rendered guitar section. So... So everything is in exactly in place as you'd expect it to be. So that's how quick and easy it is to create a sub project. Now, obviously, you could do lots of things with this, and I'm sure you can come up with your own reasons why you'd find this beneficial. But if you think about it, if we worked on a track that we want to send out for mastering, we could create sub projects for all these items, which means they retain their editability in separate projects. But then they're kind of all grouped together with all of the effects taken offline, ready to go out and do whatever's needed for this particular end project. So that's really all there is to create in a sub project. It's pretty quick and painless. So now we have two ways that we can kind of work. If we want to apply effects to the overall guitar bus in this example, we can do that independently of the sub project. And we can just click add effects like we normally would. So we could do this, anything we want to that. Or alternatively, we can actually go over to the sub project and any changes you make on this, once we hit the save button, then that'll automatically save that information and update the master project with all of the changes you've applied to it. So they're linked to each other, but they're still semi-independent of each other. So I hope that kind of makes sense in, in what I'm talking about there. So that's how you create a sub-project. It's quick and easy, and there's no real sort of dramas to do in this kind of thing. Like I say, the benefits of doing it, well, I'm sure that there's lots of different benefits and, and you know, each person can come up with their own sort of idea of why they'd find this useful. But, you know, it's one of the new features that we brought in in the new version of Reaper. And I've got to be honest, I think it's a cracking little addition to the software. Now, while sub projects are a new addition to the latest version of Reaper, we've also had the ability for quite some time now to actually insert 
projects directly into another project. So let's say, for example, I wanted to take part of an existing song, and I didn't want to sort of just copy all those elements over. I wanted to take that over while retaining the original file. I can do that simply by just finding the file that I want. I'm looking for the RPP file, which is the actual Reaper project file. I can just drag that over my project. Now, I've got a, a blank project at the moment, but you could insert this into any existing project. Let go. That's going to bring up a dialog box that gives us three options. We can insert the project as a media item. We can open the project, or we can open the project in a new tab. Now, these second two options are effectively going to either close the current project down and open up the project in its place, or it's going to create a new tab and insert the project in there. So we have a second tab open or a third tab and so on. But the first option will allow us to do pretty much the same as creating a sub project does, but in reverse. So by doing this, this will load in the original project. It'll create and render a copy of the audio from that and insert that directly into this project as a stereo file. So you can see we've now got that particular file is inserted into this project. Now, the thing that this doesn't do and something to be aware of is that it will not tempo match. So you're going to have to be careful to make sure that you know exactly what the original tempo of this piece is so you can update the tempo of this song or this particular audio now. Obviously, if you're inserting one project into part of another and the tempos are different, then that's going to have an obvious effect where you're going to have a different tempo on the two different sections. So again, bear that in mind if you use this method. But what we can do now is if we double click this, that will now open up a second tab with the original file, the original source file, much the same way as the sub project did and allow us to edit the original piece of audio. So you can see that we can easily edit that. And just to recap on what I was saying with the uh, the tempo, you can see this was actually recorded in 110 BPM, whereas the new project you insert this into is at 120 BPM. So, you know, like I say, we need to change that. But any changes you now make to this, if we hit save on that, will automatically update itself in this one. It'll re-render it out, and you'll see that now will take on the new changes we've made to it. So it's a great way of using this as the basic of a, basis of a new project where you may want to sort of start something off and then just trail off and do something else with it. You know, like I said before, the uses for this are entirely you know, endless. So I hope you found this useful. I hope you've seen that, you know, you can now sort of use projects as parts of other projects. And again, one thing to be uh, mindful of is that if you create a sub-project, if you've got sends from that particular piece of audio that you're creating a sub project from to something else say like for example you've got your guitars i'll go into a dedicated channel a dedicated track that specifically does the reverb or delays and things that will not be retained you'll lose that link there so just be careful if you're doing that and you wonder why things are not working the way you, they used to it's because you created a sub project and those links no longer exist so you'd have to relink so just bear that in mind. Well, I hope you found this video useful. If you have, please hit the subscribe button below. It really does help. If you have any comments, questions, or feedback on this technique or anything else we cover on this channel, please pop those in the comment section below. We read everything you put on there, and we try to reply to every comment or question. If you want exclusive content, please visit www.reapertv.co.uk, where we've got extra content exclusively available on our website that's not available anywhere else. We release new videos every Friday, so if you hit the subscribe button, you're going to be kept up to date with all of the latest additions to this channel. Well, until next time, happy mixing.